Good afternoon, everyone. You're all very welcome to our service of the word. And I'm sure that you will agree with me that it's lovely to be back in church and to worship again together. While we engage with those in the wider community and within our group of parishes and from various parts of the British Isles, you're all very welcome indeed. In Reverend Adam's absence, and God willing, he hopes to be back with us on Sunday the 20th of December. So in the meantime, I will be leading our worship. And for those who may not know me, my name is Elsie Stewart, and I'm a parish reader here in Stranorder. My thanks as always to John Key as he looks after the technology so that our service is streamed live on Facebook. And later on this afternoon, it will be available on YouTube and then on dial a service at 6 p.m. this evening. During the service, John will read from God's word and he will lead us in prayer. Thank you, John. Um, our notices, next Sunday, the 13th of December, Kiltebuk Church will reopen for public worship at 10 a.m., followed by a service here in St. Norler at 12 noon. The services will adhere to social distancing and to the guidelines which were and the same safety measures in place when public worship was previously allowed. And the wearing of face coverings will be mandatory. So please follow the advice of the church wardens. Our harvest Thanksgiving offering, um, uh, as we were unable to be in church and take up our usual offering, um, Parishioners are being asked to donate to the Diocesan Level Appeal to assist Bishop Hal Spears in Mangajanga Diocese in Madagascar to provide essential resources. If you would like to donate, please post your donation to Mrs. Louis Taylor or um, Mr. Henry Key, whose addresses are there. The 16 Days of Activism Against Gender-Based Violence uh, a campaign is takes place each year from the 25th of November on to the 10th of December, where Mothers' Union members work alongside communities to help end gender-based violence and to support those affected by it. Um, you will find more details of this on the Mothers' Union website. Kingdom Kids continues for the children of Sunday School age and details are available on our web page. And uh, this is week, I think it's week nine and the titled The Queen. The diocese, the diocese also continues to run the online alpha course every Thursday night at 8 p.m. via Zoom. And again, more details of this can be found on the diocesan website. These and other notices can be found in our weekly Crosslinks notice sheet, which is available on the parish website. Today, uh, we celebrate the second uh, Sunday in Advent, so the second candle in our Advent wreath is lit, and I invite John to come and light them, please, for us. The second candle, often referred to as the candle of peace, reminds us of the prophets, Isaiah and the minor prophet, who foretold the birth of Christ. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, just and true. To you be praise and glory forever. Of old, you spoke by the mouth of your prophets, but in our days, you speak through your son, whom you have appointed the heir to all things, Grant us, your people, to walk in his light, that we may be found ready and watching when he comes again in glory and judgment. For you are our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. And we say together, Lord God, 
you spoke through the, your prophets and promised a kingdom of peace. We welcome you, Lord Jesus, the Prince of Peace, and our hearts long for the establishment of your kingdom of justice and righteousness. Amen. Let us still our hearts as we come to worship God. Heavenly Father, in our worship, help us to sing your praises, confess our sins, hear your word, and bring our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Our first hymn this morning is In the Bleak Midwinter, which is very up for today.
say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful to give, forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us come to God seeking his forgiveness. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive, save us and help us. By failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by the temptations in the world around us. Father, forgive, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. Almighty God, who in Jesus has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. Forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth and strengthen us to do God's will and give the joy and give the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The colic for the second Sunday in Advent. O Lord, rise up, we pray, your power and come among us and with great might succor us that whereas through our sins and wickedness, we are grievously hindered in running the race that is set before us. Your bountiful grace and mercy may speedily help and deliver us through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. I invite John now to our, our first reading from Isaiah chapter 40. Thank you, John. A reading from Isaiah chapter 40, beginning at verse 1. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem. Herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might 
and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother of the sheep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, John. May I invite you all to stand for our psalm, please? And the appointed psalm for today is Psalm 85, verses 1 to 2 and 8 to 13. I will say the response and we will read the text of the psalm together. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortunes of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. So show us your mercy, mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the end, and the righteous shall look down from heaven. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway to his feet. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Please be seated. The New Testament reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, through this season of Advent, we ask that you would open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may hear your word and understand what it is that you are saying to us, so that with humble and repentant hearts, we will be prepared and look forward with joy for your coming among us. In Jesus' name, amen. Last week, we celebrated the first Sunday in Advent and began to think about the meaning behind this season and the celebrating of Christmas Day and how, apart from preparing our homes for Christmas, how much more important it is that we prepare our hearts and souls 
not only for the coming of the Christ child, but also for when Jesus will come again to claim his redeemed people. This year, the lead up to Christmas is undoubtedly different, to say the least. For many, this doesn't feel like the usual busy and tearful time that we have come to know as we journey through Advent towards Christmas. Our thoughts and prayers go to the hundreds of thousands of families around the world who will be spending this Christmas without a loved one as they have died due to the pandemic. For many more, including many of us, we will be celebrating without our usual large gatherings of family and friends as we do our best to hear to public health advice. But God promises us in his word, no matter how difficult and demanding the circumstances we find ourselves in, he will always be present with us, shielding us and guiding us. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse two, God says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. As we go forward into the new year, by the grace of God and through scientific and medical research, we are so thankful for the good news that COVID-19 vaccines are ready to be distributed and will be available, God willing, from early in January. This provides us with an optimistic pathway forward out of this dark, anxious and lonely time that we are now experiencing. In a year when so much has been asked of so many, the sacrifices that we have made, the challenges of isolation that many of our elderly people have undertaken, the many difficult challenges that we have faced and in most instances have overcome. The new technologies that we've had to embrace through which we have found new ways to worship, to work, to interact with each other, which has shown us that we have the ability to change and adapt when circumstances calls us to step up. But there are many things that fundamentally have remained the same. There is something beautiful about all the lights that we now see around us in our streets, the shop windows, and increasingly in our homes. As they shine and sparkle, they catch our eye and get our attention, somehow shining through the gloom, giving us the promise of a brighter and better future. In our gospel reading this Sunday, John the Baptist is trying to do the very same thing. He too is trying to get our attention because he has a message for us as we take another step on our Advent journey that will lead us into a brighter and better future in Christ. God, if we trust him, will give us the ability to keep our hearts and minds set on Jesus even in the darkest days when we feel overwhelmed by the anxieties that life invariably throws at us. We read there from the first chapter of Mark's gospel and right from the beginning of verse one, Mark announces Jesus is the beginning of good news, Jesus, the son of God. One commentary I read said this, and I quote, Mark stresses Jesus' image about the kingdom of God, now breaking into human life as good news. And Jesus himself as the gospel of God. Jesus is the son whom God has sent to rescue humanity by serving and by sacrificing his life. Today, Mark introduces us to John the Baptist, who could be described as a fascinating person, although in many ways we might consider him quite odd. But he is undoubtedly one of the great personalities of the gospel. 
our reading from Isaiah, a prophet born centuries before Christ's birth, who had been given the gift of prophecy. And we are blessed that the, by the fact that all was written down so that it could be shared. There are many passages in Isaiah which foretell the coming of a Messiah and the many ways in which Jesus is identified as the Messiah is given in great detail. But here in Mark's gospel, we find him quoting the words from Isaiah that foretold of the birth of John the Baptist who would become, who would come before Christ to prepare his people. John the Baptist lived a simple life in the desert, clothed himself with what he found and nourished himself with food that nature provided for him. He wasn't sidetracked with the cares or the attractions of this world. He chose to obey God's call in his life. And he said yes to God's mission of proclaiming the arrival of Jesus, who he recognized as the long awaited Messiah. Even today, our eternal future is dependent upon John's message. It reminds us of our need for forgiveness of sins as he calls us to prepare our hearts and minds to recognize and respond to the loving presence of Jesus waiting to come into our lives. John doesn't seem to care about other people's opinions. He wasn't a people pleaser. His mission in life was to see others brought to the repentance of their sins. Many people followed him and traveled long distances to hear him preach, but he didn't let that make him proud or arrogant. He preached a simple message of the need of repentance of sins, that people needed to get right with God while baptizing those who accepted his teaching in the River Jordan. But John knew that baptizing with water was only a stopgap as he introduced his listeners to the one who was more powerful than he and who would baptize them with the Holy Spirit. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me will come one who is powerful, more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. We hear the voice of John the Baptist reaching out to us, becoming very real to us. First, he calls us to repent, to take time and look at our lives, to take a closer look at how we are living our lives, and I hope you will join with me in asking yourself, as I ask myself, the following questions. Am I willing to make the changes that stops me putting God on the back burner of my life? Do I treat God as a second class citizen in my busy day to day schedules? Do I treat my faith like a habit? Or am I investing in time to study God's word, to acquire new insights into developing and the nurturing of my faith? Am I guilty of being preoccupied with my own life and my own agendas that I have little interest and time for the well being of others? These are soul searching questions that we all need to ask ourselves if we proclaim to follow Christ. As John the Baptist set his life on a path of making straight the way for others, we are called to do the same. Jesus tells us many times in the gospels that the greatest of all commandments is to love God first and then to love one another, to love out of concern for those around us. Advent is a time of preparation that involves preparing our hearts. Preparing our hearts means reaching out to those who have been hurt by the bad choices they have made in life or by the action of others. The Bible tells us that we have an obligation to help them. 
We are to take the skills and resources that God has blessed us with and point them to Jesus through the love we show them so that they will gain through our words and action and insight into who Jesus really is. Many people asked John who he really was. They wondered if he was the promised Messiah or Elijah or even a false prophet. Yet clearly John answer, firmly answered no to all these and repeatedly pointed to Christ as the Messiah. His mission was to direct the people towards the Savior. As Christians, followers of Christ, our mission in life must surely be to point others to Jesus, just as John did. It is not our job to convert people. The Bible says that that is the work of the Holy Spirit working in people's lives. John the Baptist asks us to take to look deep within ourselves and ask ourselves, have we done all that we can? Have we lived the life that our faith in God expects of us? Or are these things or are there things happening in our lives that hinders our faith, of which we need to repent and seek God's forgiveness? In Acts chapter 13, Chapter 3, verse 9, we read, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out and that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. When we turn to God and seek his forgiveness, we are a forgiven people. This means that we don't have to carry around forever the burdens of our sin, our faults, and our feelings. God covers them with his mercy and wipes our slate clean. Psalm 103 verses 11 to 12 from the Message Bible. As high as heaven is over the earth, so strong is his love for those who fear him. And as far as sunset rise is from sunset, he has separated us from our sins. John the Baptist cries out for us, to repair for the birth of Christ. He appeals for us to repent, to change our ways. But what does that change mean for each and every one of us? This is something we can only answer as individuals. We need to search our hearts to see where we need to make those changes in our personal lives, changes that will bring glory to our loving God and Father. May we use Advent as a time to quietly reflect, to use it as an opportunity to deepen our sense of faith in our God, who walks alongside us on our journey of life. May we set aside some extra time and space for prayer, reflection and good works. John the Baptist calls us to look inward into the very being of our core, to search for and confess our sins. And as we examine our hearts, may we do so in the words of the psalmist. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thought. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me to the way everlasting. May the remaining weeks of Advent continue to remind us of how we are called during this season of preparation to change those aspects of our life that do not speak of or demonstrate the presence of Christ in our lives. As we journey through Advent, let us allow ourselves time to pause, time to ask ourselves the question, what changes must I make during this season that will make me a voice calling others to follow Christ in the world today. Let our answer be shaped by our hope in the truth that Jesus is coming again. And let us live in such a way so that we will greet the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, with joyful praise in the sure and certain knowledge 
of the new Jerusalem that awaits his faithful servants. John the Baptist's message to us is that we, like him, are called to point people to Christ, the one who is more powerful, more patient, and more loving than we can ever imagine, the one who is to come, who alone is our hope and our defender. Amen. Let us affirm our faith as we say the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe and trust in God, the Father who made the world? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Son, who redeemed mankind? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite John now to lead us in prayer. Thank you, John. Let us pray. Lord God, we pray that we and your whole church across the world may be prepared for your coming to us. And when you come, May you find us a holy and a godly people. May you find us striving for peace and looking forward to your glory. Across the world, all of the Anglican churches pray today for the church in Spain and their bishop, the right Reverend Carlos Lopez Loanzo. Bless Andrew, our bishop. And within the Diocese of Derry and Raffaele, the churches today, or the parishes there today, will be praying for us, for Stranola, for Mean Glass, for Cotivo, and for Reverend Adam. Strengthen our faith that this new church year deepen our commitment to you, God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember today all who are being baptized. We pray for parents, for godparents. We come with all who are sorry for their sins, who want to lead a new life, for all who are seeking forgiveness and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all who are striving for peace. Bless the leaders of nations and peacekeeping forces. We pray especially for the Irish soldiers in the Lebanon and in Mali. We continue to pray for Ethiopia, for the violence and war in Eritrea and Tigray. Guide the United Nations and the work of relief agencies. And may we strive for justice and freedom 
for all peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask at our homes, maybe places of welcome, places of love and harmony. May we find room for you in our lives and our work. Not to be just a mere habit, but going out to your glory and sharing your goodness and love across our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We come before you, Lord, with all who are struggling, those who may be self-isolating or protecting themselves via a bubble. For those who are ill at home or awaiting results that may have been delayed, appointments not kept. And across the world, perhaps in this time of plenty, and we remember the poor for those whose meal tonight or this day is not guaranteed, for those who are oppressed, for those who suffer from violence or rejection, for those coming to terms of violence, true gender-based violence, forgive me. Open the hearts of those affected by that. And open the hearts of the perpetrators so that they may realize that it is wrong. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And continuing on this campaign against gender-based violence, for no more one in three, the Mother's Union have prepared this prayer. Loving Lord, our care and love are ever present in our lives. We pray for our brothers and sisters throughout the world who live in situations of abuse and violence. Give them hope in their hopelessness. Help them find strength in their weakness. Grant them freedom from their oppression. Transform their brokenness into wholeness. Heal their wounds, visible and invisible. Grant us all the courage and wisdom, grace and humility to act at all times with compassion and with care. And grant all who are harmed by abuse or coercion peace, true justice. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, we remember before you all who have died. Our friends and loved ones departed and all your saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And together we say, Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, John. 
And now we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn this uh, afternoon is Immortal Invisible, God Only Wise. As we go out into the week ahead as people of God, let us say together, may the Lord Jesus Christ and God our Father, who loved us and graciously gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage our hearts and strengthen us in every good deed and word. Amen. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Amen. And we say together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Thank you for all for joining with me here in the church this morning and to everybody who is joining in online. Uh, take care and God bless until we meet again. And we shall conclude our service with a beautiful song rendition of the peace. <laughs>